Leonard Euler, whom we met in another video, was the most prolific mathematician the world's ever known. He was also a very great mathematician, the greatest of his time. And it's not surprising that a lot of theorems and formula and other objects in mathematics have been named after him. For example, Euler's number, the natural base of logs, E, and Euler's identity. The one I want to talk about today is called Euler's constant, or as it's sometimes known, the Euler-Mascheroni constant. So, let's discover the maths of this most unusual number. The value of Euler's constant to five decimal places was first published by Euler in 1735. In 1781, he extended his approximation to 16 digits, and nine years after that, the Italian mathematician Lorenzo Mascheroni gave it to 32 digits, which is why the number is also called the Euler-Mascheroni constant. Whether the Italian fully deserves this recognition, however, is debatable since he got the last 13 digits wrong. Though less well known than pi or e, Euler's or the Euler-Mascheroni constant is very important because of the many different areas of maths in which it appears and its numerous connections with important results and formula. Euler's constant has come to be denoted by a lowercase gamma because of its intimate link with an important function known as the gamma function, a generalization of the factorial function represented by an uppercase gamma. The easiest way to define it is as the value towards which the following expression heads as n gets bigger and bigger. So we have gamma equal to 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 and so on plus 1 over n minus the natural log of n. The natural log of n is the power to which e has to be raised to equal n. For example, if n equals 1000, the natural log of n is approximately 6.908 because e to the power of 6.908 equals roughly 1000. The value of the series 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 etc plus 1 over n, which is called the harmonic series, increases very slowly as n increases, although it does diverge, in other words, grows without limit. The same is true of the natural log of n. Gamma just happens to be the difference between these two slowly diverging functions as n tends to infinity. The value of gamma, which starts off as 0 0.5772566, has been calculated by computer to more than 100 billion decimal places. Surprisingly though, we don't know what kind of number gamma actually is. Real numbers may be either rational or irrational, and irrational numbers may be either algebraic or transcendental. We're certain that, for example, 2, 3.14 and a third are rational, and we're equally sure that pi, e, and the square root of 2 are irrational. We know too that pi and e are both transcendental, whereas root 2 is algebraic. But strange to say, for all its importance and ubiquity, we don't even know if gamma is rational or irrational, let alone whether it's also transcendental. In fact, establishing the status of gamma is a major unsolved problem in maths. The great German mathematician David Hilbert thought the problem in his day was unapproachable. Two giants of number theory, the British mathematicians John Conway and Richard Guy, have said they are prepared to bet that it is transcendental. All we can say for sure at the moment is that if gamma is rational, in other words can be written as a over b where a and b are both whole numbers, then b must be at least 10 to the power 
242,080. There's a similar constant to gamma that applies specifically to prime numbers. It's called the Meissel-Mertens constant M. M equals 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 7 plus 1 over 11 etc plus 1 over N minus the natural log of the natural log of N. The sum of reciprocals of primes diverges incredibly slowly, as shown by the fact that the difference between it and the natural log of the natural log of n is only m equal to approximately 0 0.2615. Although it's known that the natural log of the natural log of n diverges to infinity, you would never guess it by the rate at which it grows. In fact, by the time n has reached a Google, that's 10 to the power of 100, the natural log of the natural log of n is a mere 5.4 or so. When n has climbed to the dizzying heights of a Googleplex, that's 10 to the power of a Google, or 10 to the 10 to the 100, a number so gargantuan that there isn't space enough in the universe to write it out, even if the zeros were written as small as quarks, the natural log of the natural log of n is still only around 231. Gamma itself turns up in many places in number theory. Analysis, of which calculus is a part, and the manipulation of functions. Although obscure to most of us, these appearances by gamma are of vital concern to both mathematicians and scientists. For example, gamma is central to something called the Gumbel distribution, which can be used to predict future maxima and minima if previous extreme values are known. This makes it of great practical value in predicting the chances of a natural disaster, such as a volcanic eruption or an earthquake, occurring in a given period of time. Through its role in the gamma function mentioned earlier, gamma is involved in the modeling of cryptographic systems and therefore in the maths of ensuring secure transactions. Gamma also shows up in the solutions of Bessel functions, which can be used to model wave-like systems, including the design of waveguide antenna, the vibration of membranes, and the conduction of heat through substances, all problems relevant to the design of mobile phones. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this subject as interesting as I do. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you again very soon to discover more maths.